<sighs> so this video is about color mixing and how you color mix so lately a lot of people i've met and even i've come across they they come from like a digital background they don't come from traditional backgrounds a lot of a lot of younger students who know how to paint uh they do come from a lot of digital background so i'm actually going to make this video mostly for people who don't understand traditional but do know how to paint and they're coming from a, a more digital background does that mean like it's not for traditional people uh, i guess it will kind of work well, like i will explain how you can apply your traditional skills to digital skills and how you can apply your digital skills to traditional skills that's basically what i'm looking at this is not a gimmick per se uh this is not some kind of a shortcut but it's more like just understanding colors and there are a lot of youtube videos out there that explain coloring probably better than me and probably better than this video as well uh but most of them um at least whatever i've gone through they don't really explain mixing colors that well uh traditional painters who do have youtube channels actually explain that and they explain it way better than the dig digital artists but i guess everyone has their work process or workflow so i'll just get on with the video so mixing colors is actually not very hard uh i'm just going to use the default brushes uh so that you know just to give you like an idea that you don't really need any special brush uh you can create special brushes but that yeah that's completely fine if you if you want to if you want to create those and and you know maybe it'll help you paint faster then that's completely okay so like what's the difference or comparison you could say like what's the take um between the traditional workflow and the digital workflow well digital workflow is a bit more forgiving because you got multiple layers so i can paint this in one layer i can paint this i can paint another color in like a separate layer right uh it just makes it easier to paint uh it makes it easier to uh easier to correct uh things you know it's like a, it's a tool that makes it easier to to like you know um it helps correcting or it helps um painting things easier or if you make mistakes and you want to rectify them and all that stuff it just helps you it just helps you to a much easier format well as in traditional you got a canvas and if you spoil the paper of that canvas you're kind of have to start over all over like on a new fresh canvas altogether right so i'm just going to be using a probably a solid round brush and maybe one with pressure opacity and sensitivity and all that stuff so yeah it'll be just these two so the thing about color mixing is like um there are plenty of videos first off there's a plenty there are plenty of videos that explain color theory so i'm not going to go into that um and i'm assuming most of the people who have seen who are watching this video do understand color theory or like have gone through other other youtubers videos who explain color theory so you know just like if you haven't then i would recommend it just go through it and you know watch those first before you come to this one so uh as far as color mixing goes is it's not that hard like if i'm using a regular pressure sensitive uh you know like with opacity uh settings and whatever like the default brushes i'd get on like photoshop or Clip Studio or whatever other software you're using. If I'm using those, right, I can, you can already see I'm mixing the colors and I can create a whole new palette, right? It's already happening. And what color theory states is that you got warm colors, which are like your reds, your oranges, your yellows, right? And then you got the cool colors, which are closer to your blues and, and all those other colors together. And when you mix the two, you'll probably get like some different kind of palette. And if you've seen like other artists explaining color theory, they will always explain you like how you get different color palettes. 
which are saturated and desaturated and they actually play with the saturations of those colors to to you know mix uh their palette and then come up with like uh what do you whatever the composition of their painting will be right and that's the whole takeaway on it like it's it's all about how much you saturate and desaturate colors i could have an extremely saturated painting of like multiple things right uh for example let's take like this case here right i'll take this blue i'll take this green i'll take probably another red and these are all three of them are like super saturated colors so what's happening here is like i've got i've got three colors that are competing against each other and trying to grab attention right all three of them all three of them are grabbing your attention but what if i had a strong red color but i had a meek green color and maybe actually i could i could make it even less saturated right something like this there you go and probably like a very desaturated blue so what's happening is the red is the only thing that's grabbing your attention nothing else is grabbing your attention so in this case this is my color this is my color that's grabbing most of my attention and then comes in values where you have got the darks and the brights. So it's mixing colors is, you could say, a combination of uh, your saturations, your hues, which is basically explaining how dark or light, or you could say values, Right, how dark or light your colors are, and um, I think that's about it. Yeah, it's just mostly these two things that you're working with most of the time. It's just your hues and saturations. So, com combining these two together, you will get like a good sense of understanding what kind of color palettes you could mix around with. For example, uh, the most common color palettes which are used in um, like professionally with artists is like a w one single warm color and like a mild uh, cool color. So a good example could be, say for example, I'll, I'll just take this, this color palette, right? Probably I'll take one more white or blue color here. Okay, there you go. I'll take this color palette what i'm going to do is i'll just make a i'll just take a hard rub, hard brush like a, the the regular round brush this thing has no pressure sensitivity no opacity settings no nothing okay so i'll just take this right and i'll try to paint some objects inside so i got all these objects let's just say I don't know what these are, probably cubes or something, you could say, and um, they're just that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a light source. Right. Say so this is the area that's being lit. Right. So. this is like a really rough example uh i'm definitely showing more examples after that uh and then maybe i'll take this saying like hey look these are the shadows probably take this red and like just create like a border or something so when i'm creating these it's it's automatically giving you shapes that was my main goal i'm trying to create shapes here and the the idea is you're basically creating shapes through your color palette. And if I was supposed to mix this, now I'll take the the round pressure sensitive brush. If I was supposed to mix this, I would basically do something like this. Like, you know, just mix it through and create. But you'll notice that now I'm getting like a bunch of greens. It's because the, the warm and the light 
the warm and the cold colors are mixing together. So when you're painting, like traditionally, most traditional painters who were like doing this stuff, they already are aware like, hey, hey I need to, if I'm painting, I'm normally going to mix colors to create like a sense of light, sense of um, uh, tone, mood and everything else. So what happens is that my main center of focus is always these saturated tones while my so i could call them one because they're like the primary thing and then comes the rest of the objects which are two and then comes the background which is three so i'm already creating a sense of focus through this so like if i hold on focus right so that's basically the goal the goal is to create shapes and create like focus and if you've seen like other videos on values like they use just black and white right um there'll be people who'll be like oh you want to learn how to practice values and they'll be like okay let's like create some kind of a object maybe i'll create some sort of a boat or something like that i don't know right and they'll be like oh you just paint in black and white and get an idea of like what objects are going to be closer or what are going to be further away and all that stuff and uh, this is just two colors uh they might actually take the third you know like a gray to showcase like oh okay there will be like objects further away or like close by to your turn so what happens is if you notice the the object that is darkest right now is kind of like the main focus and everything else is like secondary so this is like one this is two and this is three now if you look at the breakdown this this is another thing if you look at the breakdown the object in focus is you could say in this case taking less amount of the screen but has the most defined shape and the object which is like furthest away so this is like defined and the object that's furthest away is like just the sky and that's like okay that's basically taking like you could say um you could say like maybe 10 percent or no maybe like 50 percent or like somewhere around like that of the screen while this thing is probably taking like you could say 20 percent right and then the rest of these grays are taking like 30 percent so i'm my goal here was to create like focus on the 20 percent and that was basically that is basically most of the videos that explain values um they kind of are and composition they kind of explain you like hey look you need to follow like these percentile rules where i think it's 70 30 10 or something like that i don't know so you can you have to follow these percentile rules and the percentile rules will dictate like which is the area of focus you can actually reverse that sometimes and the object is so big that it's taking the most amount of the screen while the area of focus is like probably the large one and then the rest of the stuff is like not important so you can you can play around with that and it's okay to break those rules like the rules are created for you to understand and create a sense of discipline in how to paint the good and then they can be broken to experiment and create some better options so yeah this is basically you could say the basics of understanding mixing colors right and now for the example i'm going to take like I'm going to take like somebody else's painting. This is John Berkey's painting. Uh, he's one of my favorite artists all time. Always will be. So if you look at this painting, um, I'm going to reduce the size so that I can also paint a little bit around this. Okay. So if you look at this painting, and if I was to grayscale this, where is black and white? There you go. If I was to grayscale this, you notice that the area which is the most 
occupying the space is this black. Right. This is like the this is occupying most of the space, but this is not the area of focus, right? It's pro the background. The area of focus is this thing, right? And then the remaining of it is here. So what's happening is, in this case, the white is used as, uh, I mean, basically the lighter colors are used as like the area of focus and the race, the rest of the colors, which are like a little less desaturated, a little less saturated, or you could say a little more desaturated are complementing the main subject. And then the rest of the darker values are used for the background. So if I was to break this down as color palettes, right? This is your primary color. And then the blue is the complementary. And then your darks are your tertiary. If you notice, the primary color is a warm color. And the, the background, everything else in the background are like cool colors. But there is something more happening here. Like you'll notice like hues of red, right? Uh, similarly over here. And similarly, maybe some, yeah, again, again, more on the tertiary, secondary background color, right? But most of the reds are, most of the reds, greens, and yellows are here. And if you, if I look at probably at this point, I don't know what this is, is this one? No, it's, it's part of the painting. Okay, cool, cool. Right. Uh, taking that, taking this, taking this. This right. So if you notice something, everything that is on this subject has more saturation than the background. Everything that's in the background, like this one, for example, like these are all dark colors. These are more desaturated colors. So if I was to take them, I don't know if my color wheel is visible. I don't think it is. Um, so if I was to take them in, um, if I was to compare the color palette, you would notice like the area of focus is brighter, has more saturated colors, while everything else, which is complementing to the area of focus or the subject, is relatively on the darker side of values and they have a, a more desaturated color palette this was done intentionally so that they could work with each other and not compete with each other and the, the final final thing that they this painter has done very well is how they mix the colors now i know this is a traditional painting this is why I was saying, like, how do you implement this kind of traditional painting workflow to your digital? That's that's the main goal and takeaway from this video. And that's basically what I'm that's basically the research of the subject today. So you'll notice that they have worked with sharp edges and lost edges. I know there are YouTube videos out there that are explaining this. Uh, I'm going to repeat this anyways, because this is like the most important part of mixing colors. Sharp edges will define the shapes. Lost edges will blend the shapes. And that is pretty much what this painter is doing. So if you look, uh, let me take a color that is not being used here. Yeah, there you go. So if you look at the shape of the entire spaceship that is there on this painting, it's actually pretty well defined. And that's what we call a sharp edge. Now, there is a sharp edge here around this planet, just to break the silhouette between the, the far background of the space and the planet itself, which is behind. But if you look at this part of the bottom here, take another color, if you look at, probably red, if you look at this part of the bottom here, the, this area is kind of losing its edge. And the painter kind of done it on purpose. They wanted to create an atmosphere 
in this case and they deliberately uh smudged or you could say uh, blended the two edges and you, if someone says there's a loss of information in this uh they're technically right but at the same time it is what gives the aesthetic to that painting and um, you really want to learn how to do this you want to learn how this is the essential core of mixing colors um they will start the paint the especially the older painters the ones who were like uh painting traditionally most of them use these methods like if you do master studies of these paintings uh you're definitely going to find a lot of a lot of people a uh, lot of painters from them like doing this kind of blend work mixing color, color palettes so that they could create probably a new color or it would help them desaturate the color palette in total when they know that that's not the area of focus so yeah this this is actually really really the most crucial part now if i was to demonstrate which i will now um uh, let's just create a new one i'm gonna do the same thing what i've learned just now in the past few minutes and try to do it on this sketch now this is a sketch i've already created there's artwork for this already done um so definitely you can go and check that out but now i want to create i know what the color tone of this character is this is ken from street fighter he's like everyone knows like he's wearing a red uh you know uh gi and uh, he's got blonde hair and all that stuff so i know that the overall color palette of ken is like in warm tones so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create like a cool desaturated backdrop right and i'll take just i'll just take the regular hard round, round brush there you go right so so maybe i'll just color the face or like paint the face you can say and i want to take now i want to take a little more saturated tones but like it won't be 100 percent saturated because skin tones are skin tones are skin tones they have a lot of pigmentations going all over they're kind of hard to paint uh especially for a beginner but like i'll i'll kind of do my best in explaining so what I'm doing is like I'm mixing I'm mixing the blues. I'm painting, but I'm also maintaining that blue uh which is coming from the BG. And this is like one of the techniques that you could use digitally to uh, bring back the whole traditional feel to your painting. So yeah, I'm doing that. You know, I'm creating like a little bit of reds here and there. Create that sense of pigmentation. Um, probably um, take a little more brighter. Just rough, just gently paint that. And I want that mix to happen. I want those blues to remain a little bit and all that stuff, right? So it's it's creating that sense of color temperament that I want, and then. I want to also, like if I'm painting the hair, like I'll paint like the dark color first in because I want the shadows to be to be present, right? So there's the blues are still there, like but I'm painting that orange brown and then I'll paint the blonde on top of it, right? So there you go. Right. So like this is uh a very basic example of mixing colors and painting them in uh you can definitely it's it's just like you can keep practicing this skill and actually paint like even more crazier environment shots and that's completely fine you can it's just this skill you just need you just need to get good at this and you'll automatically be able to paint like a lot more complicated paintings uh, more complex de designs and all that stuff you'll be able to do a lot more right and i want i want like a, a warm light because the whole entire background is like completely in cool colors right and then like i give him 
Like, I'll actually hue shift this to, like, purples. Like, light purples. And put them in the area for the eyes. And you'll notice it feels like it's just, it's just like a, a cool white color. It is desaturated towards white, but they're actually purples. And then similarly, I'll use blues again for the shadows. You see that? You see that? That, that basically created a, like a lot of vibrancy on my color palette right off the bat. Right? And I'm like using blues to shadows. So what's happening is the blue is mixing with the warm colors, creating like this purple tint, because that's just how color mixing works. Uh, it's it's playing around with that spectrum of creating like uh, mixing the palette and creating like more dynamic range of colors, and that's basically the goal that you want to do. You want to mix those colors to create to create like that sense of uh, you know design. And whatever that sense of like invoking that sense of feeling that you want the uh, you want like interesting color layouts coming out. Okay. And that's basically it. That's that's the whole um you know painting that's the whole technique of, in like mixing colors. And if you can do this much then I think you're pretty you're pretty solid in the overall design of the painting. Yeah. I've already painted like it was so easy. Like I, it just took me like a few minutes, and I was already I was already able to paint like a lot of a lot of um uh, of the color design. Like I'm taking the reds now, mixing it. So what will happen is it's gonna mix it in with the blues, right? And it's already creating a dynamic range of motion. And I'm using the same same concept, the same concept that the the painting that I showed as a reference from John Burke is using. Like it's the same concept but applied differently. Um, it's applied for a relatively much more easier thing compared to drawing like a massive spaceship in space. Uh, and that's like kind of fun. And then you can actually play around, like you want to create like more dynamic lights. Like this is where mixing colors really become interesting. Like you want to create more dynamic lights, you could do this. Like I could like, I could like create like these hints of blues. Maybe I'll make it brighter, right? Right. And I'm just doing this super random. Um, it's still gonna look good because I I have a very clear understanding to um uh, what values are playing. So I know the yellow is the main focus, which is drawing to the face. And um, if you notice, the yellow is like the most saturated color, and it has the highest value like it's more on the lighter tones and plus it has a lot of saturation the skin is next and then the reds are coming in and whatever the blues i'm painting into those reds like just for the heck of like adding colors to like make you feel more dynamic the values of those colors are pretty much the same so if i was to take if i was to turn on the black and white layer you see the face and the hair has the most amount of uh, value which is like on the lighter sides of things and then the reds and the blues are like almost close to each other that's the whole purpose of this painting like and then uh, mixing colors just to make just to make it look vibrant if you can pull this off uh you'd probably be able to like paint a lot of things like a shit ton of things um if i was to take something crazy On a big, on a larger scale, uh, it could be something like this. Let me see if I can pull this off. Here, I'll pull this. Let me see. Oh, there you go. Let's come down. Let's move this up. Right on top. There you go. This is a painting I've done. Cheers, people. So. 
Um, this is basically doing the same thing. It's taking values uh, from dark to light. It's taking colors from saturated to desaturated, putting them together and mixing them. That's basically what I'm doing. Uh, if you're very new to this stuff, you probably want to like experiment. But if you understand mixing colors and values, then this should be like a very easy kit for you. Now, the main point in all this is how can a traditional artist replicate the same thing in digital? And as many traditional artists I have known in my, from my experiences, most of them don't understand digital painting because sometimes they just don't get the software that well. They just don't understand and they take a while to learn the software and that's okay. Um, if you just use the regular, the default brushes, you should be able to get all the results. It's, it's actually fine. And uh, maybe, I know, I know the ones who do oil paints do this, but I don't know if the people who use watercolors do this. But if you're an artist that uses watercolors a lot, uh, you want to define your shapes. You want to define your shape. So for example, I'm going to repaint this cloud. I want to redefine my shape of the cloud. Like so I'm making this cloud roughly. So that's, this is what my definition will be. Probably I'll take it like this, right? And then I will take, like, also this segues to how you make, how you make cell shaded art by the way, which I'll explain a little more in brief. Right. So I'm taking a hard brush, painting all this, right? Creating like this cloud again. Like this, there you go. Right. It's already created. The shape of the cloud is already created. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little warm tones, like probably just like I'm still using the same hard brush. I'm not I'm not using a soft brush right now. Right, and um, I'll use uh cool tones of the upper echelon of the thing. Still using the hard brush folks. Just reminding you that. Um this also leads to creating like anime art. If you're if you're someone who's like who likes cell shaded stuff, who likes to make anime and you're using Copic markers traditionally, or if you're using digital media, whatever the case may be, um, you're mostly creating uh, solid color shapes, right? Solid color palettes. You're, you're, not, you're not mixing colors a lot. Uh, at least in anime, most of, these, uh, most of these techniques are used. Now, the sole purpose of using solid colors in anime is just because mixed color palettes are hard to animate especially in animations um like a lot of animations so if you if you look at um if you look at any anime which is like which has a lot of hand drawn stuff uh no cg work even if in, even if there is cg work um you'll see the characters are mostly solid colors they don't have a lot of mixing of colors happening on their palette but the still um, environments have a lot of mixing going on because they don't need to be animated. They're a single picture that will remain as a single picture. Uh, Studio Ghibli is like famous for that. Like their work has always gone in that. So you look at the environments in Studio Ghibli movies, they all have like this very aesthetic painterly finish of an old classical painter. But like the characters have a solid color. The reason the characters have a solid color is because it's just easier to animate those. Uh, but now it's become an aesthetic, so that's a whole different story altogether. So I've made this I've made this cloud. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix the colors. Simple as that. Right. And for those who are doing traditional and moving to digital this can actually be a good way of practicing and understanding how to digital like how to paint digitally honestly uh it's otherwise it's really hard uh i in the original painting here which i have done 
below. I've actually used a texture brush uh, just to make my workflow a little more easier. And I don't have to make that I, because I wanted to give the cloud feeling, right? Like the puffy feeling with the cloud. So that's why I would, I would use a texture brush. But like, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using a round brush right now. And I'll still get the, I'll still get the same results. Like not perfectly if I'm doing it fast, like I'll have to paint a lot more to get it. But yeah, I'll get the results. And then like paint this. Right. And then you got this pretty much. Yeah, that's about it, I guess. This is how you could take your traditional skills to digital or go the other way around. You know digital, now you want to try traditional, you can try it this way. You know, it's the logic behind painting it, painting anything is the same. It's just the medium is different. That's that's what confuses people a lot sometimes, and that's completely fine. If, if if you don't understand the medium, that's when you have that's when you're gonna struggle painting. If you have full control of your medium and your brushes, then you'll never struggle painting. So you just have to you just have to spend time understanding how it works. And if you understand how it works, then you are pretty much gonna be able to paint. That's the goal of the entire painting. And my cloud is done. Sort of. So yeah, that's that's I guess that's the end of this video. I'm not gonna continue this video. This was a short video. I don't want to make it too long. And I want to thank everyone who has been following me lately. I had some few uh, uh, more people subscribing to my channel, so appreciate it. Never expected that to happen. Uh, I just started this. I just started a YouTube channel to document my work and remind myself if I, if in case I forget how to paint, uh, or I forget how to paint certain things because I haven't painted them for a while, kind of stuff. So yeah, I basically told me that's a, that's the main reason why I started this channel, like just to document my stuff. But yeah. Overall, my cloud painting is also done, and so is the rest of my work. So thank you so much, whoever came to watch this video. Appreciate it, and see you next time.